Hello, I thought I'd make a quick video on a little tip on researching your family tree or doing general genealogy work. It's a service offered by Her Majesty's Government that you don't need to pay for. Uh, it's the service in which you can order birth, marriage and death certificates. You only have to pay if you actually order the certificate. Um, but I'm going to show you a, a trick that you can do where you don't need to order the certificate, but you can glean some very valuable information. So this is a tactic you can use if you have uh, trouble finding, say, children uh, who died during childhood. Uh, generally, it's quite useful for finding people who were born in between, born and died, sorry, in between censuses. So, for example, if you have a child who was born in 1872, they don't get caught by the 1871 census. You have to wait another 10 years until 1881. So if they die in any period before then, it's quite often sometimes too difficult to find them unless you specifically know that they're there. And obviously with a lot of families, they didn't particularly want to publicise that they'd had a, a child dying for fairly obvious reasons. So you'll need to go to the website www.gro.gov.uk now, you'll need to create an account using an email address um, and some details like your physical address. That's in case you order a certificate and they no need to know where to post it to. Um, but as I say, we're not going to be ordering any certificates. You can also nowadays uh, order a certificate via a PDF and they'll send it to your email address. That service is both cheaper and faster. I believe from memory, I don't work for them, so don't please don't quote me, but I believe they take four working days to process the order and the certificates are around about £6.50, but I, I, I don't know without double checking that, so don't take my word for it. Uh, but in any case, once you've created an account, uh, you can uh, go on this section here. Now you can do all kinds of things like order a passport. We're not going to be doing any of that. We want order certificates online. I'll take you to this screen. Uh, your eye will probably be drawn to this bit that's in red, uh, but you don't want that bit. You want this bit that doesn't really look like a link, but is definitely a link. So click this, searching the indexes. You'll then be asked to log in. Uh, so click Submit there. Now you'll be presented with a number of options here. Uh, the on We only want one of these. All the others are for tracking the progress of your certificate and things like that. We don't want any of those things. What we want is this option up here, which is GRO indexes. Now, it will show you in advance a couple of things to note here. They cover a period for births of 1837 to 1918. You can't order somebody's birth certificate who was born within the last 100 years for fairly understandable reasons. Um, and the death period is 1837 to 1957. Again, for you know fairly obvious reasons. So, if you click on this link, you'll be presented with this screen, which uh, you are given. We don't want any of these options down the right. Ignore all these. We're only going to be using this section here. So, if you click on the, in this case, we're going to start off with births. Click on the little radio button. That will present a lot of these options down below. There's quite a lot of them. Don't worry, you probably won't need to use the majority of these. Um, you will only be filling in a couple of these things for what we're doing. So I'm going to use, as I'm from Wolverhampton, a specific example of somebody who was f famous, nay infamous, uh, not through her own fault, uh, from Wolverhampton, a lady by the name of Catherine Eddowes. She was unfortunately one of Jack the Ripper's victims, and there is a blue plaque uh, well, there are actually two blue plaques. There's actually a blue plaque about her birth in Wolverhampton, where she was born in the Graisley Green area. And there is a plaque uh, in London where she was unfortunately murdered. Um, now, I'm using her as she's a famous example. Uh, I know that she has brothers and sisters, which means that we can uh, do the trawl option that I'm going to show. Uh, and I don't really want to show you know, somebody's family who... Uh, isn't famous and you know hasn't been thoroughly well researched so you'll note the the options we are going to be looking at so we have surname so if we type in 
uh, in this case Edo's see I've already been here before now there's a little quirk to this that you'll you'll see in a second uh, we have the option to type in both a first and second forename now just be aware that the more bits of information that you type in the more specific your query is and thus any kind of uh, misspelling or where it can be say for example if if you have somebody who has a in your family you know has a forename and a surname if they were born and their birth certificate doesn't have the the second forename on and you've typed that in you won't pull back a match uh, for because it's it's not there on the birth certificate so my advice on this front would be very often to be a vaguer rather than specific so what we're going to do in this case is we're just going to fill in Catherine, which is obviously her forename. Now, there's an option here for sex. Unfortunately, you can't, which would be a wonderful feature if you're from the GRO and watching this. If there was an option to say both, but you can't. So if you are doing a trawl, you have to do it uh, both by year, which we'll come on to in a second, and by gender. So, sorry, by sex. Uh, so if we click on this, she was female. Now with year, you can, I, I know for a fact that Catherine Dedos was born uh, in April 1842. But when you're looking for people in whichever family tree you're doing, you may not be that specific. You have a rough idea of when they were born. So you can use this option here, which is a little plus minus feature. So we can set that to two. And what that will do is that will take, it'll do a trawl plus minus two, so uh, two years either side of 1842. So essentially what that means is you're covering a five year period. So you will have results for 1840, 1841, 1842, 43 and 44. So, now ignore all the rest of these. We're not for now going to use district of birth, although that is quite a useful feature. This section below of GRO references, that's it's only useful if you're looking for literally a specific certificate and you have that information, which I've never ever used. And I do quite a lot of genealogy research. Uh, quarter is a, a slightly oldie worldy thing they used to do, which was the quarter of the year they were born in. You, you, that is sometimes useful, but generally speaking, it's not that useful. Um, it, it's, it's useful in the sense that it will give you a, a three-month window in which somebody was born. So if you are trying to pinpoint exactly when somebody was born, you can go, ah, it was in that, those three months. So when you then find the exact date of their birth, it will fall within those three. But it's not all that useful. Now, mother's maiden name, that is very useful. So I know, for example... Uh, that Catherine's mother's maiden name was Evans, not Sloan, that's my name. We'll keep all the uh, previous searches you found, generally speaking. So, there we go, we're ready to go, we'll search for that. And we get no results. That's strange, isn't it? Well, I may have already done this, and I've realised what the issue is, is that for some reason on Catherine's birth certificate she is actually Catherine not Kath with an E so then there we go in 1842 in the J quarter which just for quick reference it'll show you here so she was born between April and June which I know she was born in April so that matches uh, her mother's maiden name was Evans, and she was born in Wolverhampton and Seasden, which uh, she was born, as I say, in the Graysley area of Wolverhampton. So we have found our uh, lady. You can click that and then order the certificate if you so wish to, but we're not going to be doing that today. Uh, what we will do, though, is I'll show you the, the, the quite a powerful feature of this facility, which is if you delete out the forename you only need to use a surname you don't need a forename or a second forename you only need the fields where you'll see a little red asterisk next to them they're the mandatory fields so if we do that well we've got this plus minus two we'll have a look for any sisters she may have had now 
there's Catherine. There we go. Now it's unlikely that's going to be a different uh, person or a different family because we have the same mother's maiden name and the same surname. Uh, so if we go back a little bit more, see if there's any of this. No, it doesn't look there's any that way. It just shouldn't make any difference there. It's still covered by the five year period. And if we go the other way, so 1842, if we go to 1845, yeah, so I, I uh, with you know, without knowing, I would say there's probably not any uh, sisters around that uh, period of time. So we can instead look for boys. Uh, so here we go. Now, as I say, I may have already looked at this, so I know what the family tree is, which I'll show you in a minute for the Eddowes family. Uh, you can see that there are two boys there, George and Thomas. They were born in a different place in St. Mary Magdalene, Bermondsey, Surrey. Um, now, you have to be a little bit careful if you're not using district of birth. So, for example, I could type in Wolverhampton there and it would restrict people to only being who were born in Wolverhampton with those other matching criteria. But I know for a fact, and I'll show you now, Here's the Eddowes family tree. Now, George, uh, sorry, Alfred, we won't pick up because he was born in 1832. Let me zoom that in for you a little bit. Harriet, we wouldn't pick up because she was born in 1833. Emma, again, 1834. Now, Eliza, we, uh, did we pick Eliza up? Bear with me. I lost track of where we were. Uh, No, so uh, she, it's down in this family tree here. She was born in 1837. I suspect she could have, there's, you know, with 1837, it's not necessarily that everybody from the 1st of January. And also sometimes if somebody was, uh, that person when they were doing the research on ancestry, if it shows as 1837, it could also have been right at the end of 1836. So that's why that one probably isn't there. But Interestingly, this person doesn't have, in their research that they've done, Mary Ann, who was born in 1840. So Mary Ann would slot in here between Eliza and Catherine. Uh, but what you will notice is when we looked for boys, we'd found George and Thomas. So there we go, George Eddowes, 1846, Thomas, 1845. And if we were to keep doing a troll, we'd find, you know, various Eddowes members there. But as I say, they show in a different district. And just to confirm, uh, Thomas Eddowes, Middle, London, Middlesex, England. So they moved down to London. Um, obviously, that's where Catherine was, uh, unfortunately, met her end as well. So that would explain why there is a difference but just be careful if you're you're searching for your own family and as i say you can input a district in here so you just type in and it all somewhat pre-populate these so yeah wolverhampton um but yeah that that's about it for the uh the birth side of it now here's catherine again so she died in 1888 so we can look for that as well. So if we click into the death tab, that sounds ominous. But if we put in 1888, uh, where are we? 1888. Now, interesting to see, is she spelled as Catherine or Catherine? when she dies now make sure you don't get caught out by that it's very easy to leave that set to the the wrong sex because you're doing a big trawl of data uh so we'll put that back to female now the good thing about the death section is that it gives you 
the age at death. It gives you less information and you don't get a mother's maiden name, etc, etc. And of course, remember with women, you need to put in what their surname at death would be. You can't put in their maiden name because you won't find anything for them. So uh, you need to, if you're searching for a married lady, you need to make sure you, and that, that is a, a trick that can catch you out a little bit. If somebody's had multiple marriages and you don't know who their their sort of final marriage was, so to speak, you can get a little bit caught out by that. But here we have her, Catherine Eddowes, died in 1888 in D quarter. So let's just double check, October to December. And she died on the 8th of October, 8th, oh, sorry. Ooh, that's an interesting one. So she died on the 30th of September. Yeah, so she would have probably just ticked over into the that quarter. So uh, what you, as I say, what you will notice though, age at death 43. So that's quite useful in that if you don't know when somebody was born, which can be quite a common thing when you're doing your family tree. Um, you can, if you can find out when they died, you can work backwards. So you can then go, oh, well, if she died at 43 in 1888, she was born in 1842, and then do a search the other way around for the birth. Um, but yeah, so I guess there was the only other thing I was going to very quickly try. Just uh, check on the... Uh, on the births front, we had Mary Ann, wasn't it, from memory? My memory's terrible, I do apologise. Uh, so I'll just show you that feature now so we can narrow down that list. I could have typed in Evans, but uh, I'll just show you this way around. Yeah, there we go. So there was only two Edos during that time. With uh, We've taken out the maiden surname there, so... It's not looking for specifically Evans, but those were the only two. So Mariana Eddowes. So I'm not going to put in Anne just because, again, that makes it far more specific. We click over to death. Um, we'll take up Wolverhampton again because that does make it a little bit more specific. There we go. So she died as a baby. So interestingly, whoever this person is... Uh, they do not appear to have had that person in their tree, but it's understandable that they wouldn't because if you don't know how to, to do this little quirk of using the GRO index, you it's going to be very difficult for you to find uh, children who died as, as babies. Uh, so that's a little trick you can use for researching your family tree. Uh, I hope this has been useful to you. If there are any questions, please feel free to ask down in the comments uh, if you're not subscribed to my channel. I'd love you to be a subscriber, no pressure and all that, uh, but every little helps. And if you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, give this a thumbs up. Thanks for your time today.